one of the leading causes of death and depression among teens. And if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't matter. No pain, no gain, right? A scourge that many have taken for granted. It's no longer time where we can continue to tease and jeer and, and make it become as a normal part of life because we just don't know the subjective experience of the individual who's, receive, who's on the receiving end of, of, of that teasing. Parents are among the guilty parties. It's the worst thing I ever make in my life. I, you ain't doing nothing around. You stupid, you ain't, you don't, you ain't doing nothing in school. What, Mommy, why is it what are you for? Stop the Bullying, a program that examines the state of bullying in the Caribbean. As society speaks on an old habit which some of us have taken for granted, but which has grown into a public health issue, even the bullies themselves offer points of views to their actions. I'm your perpetrator, the enforcer, the labeler, the discreditor of people. I destroy your self-esteem. I alienate you. Why do I do this? Probably because I choose to be the predator, not the prey. And as a regional public health agency leads a campaign to stamp out bullying, recommendations come from the youth population. The age range, what I heard, was from 13 to 17. And the Domestic Violence Act, from what I've read, is mainly for adults and it can be vice versa, male or female, that does it. So wouldn't it be more effective if you target the specific age range within the school and create a set of laws to help combat the bullying? You can launch a campaign for that. Stop the Bullying has been brought to you by the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, with funding from the European Union. Oh, <laughs> I was always a heavy girl. I didn't mind it much or really notice it. Mother used to pinch the fat on my thighs and with a smile say the world loved me so much it gave me more. Her tone coaxing from me, the shrillest laughter and a snort, a hot face and rosy cheeks. But when they called me fat, the inflection was a far cry from the friendly warmth of my mother, only stirring up disgusting gray within my soul. I couldn't place it, but your voice, tainted with society's hatred, accented by scrutinizing eyes and a snare, I felt small. Small, a word in your mind synonymous with stunning, and somehow the thought sauntered through, unmonitored and unimpeded, taking up space in my mind, the squatter. I tried to hurt you just the same, and even if it didn't kill the pain, I'll be exactly what you wanted. Small, sorry, stunning. Bullying, a social phenomenon that has been embedded in the strata of Caribbean societies for decades. A norm, so to speak, when name-calling, teasing, and violent physical contact is a rite of passage for many. In some cases, a tradition. And perfection leaves no space for mistakes. Any more on the scale slide out of my favor. I'm not small enough. I'm ugly. So I slice myself up, carving out the pain inside. But it just doesn't hurt like it used to. And if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't matter. No pain, no gain, right? Bullying. It's one of the leading causes of death and depression among teens. The 2007 Global School-Based Student Health Survey, GSHS, conducted in the Cayman Islands, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago, showed alarming figures about the nature of the issue in the region. I am bruised, scorned, judged because of who I am. These labels you stick to me are not me. It's what you think I am. Or are they? Gay, bulla man, faggot, batty boy, shem, lesbo, dyke, he, she. Despite my real sexuality, you continue to label me with negativity. My canvas like graffiti, diminishing my self-worth. I am a heterosexual, I swear, but what you tell me makes me question. Am I queer? Even though it gives you no right to learn. Targeted because I prefer pink? Is it because I don't smoke, drink, or play rough? I like to feel well-groomed, but I'm labeled by the world as feminine. Because of these words, your slander, your hate, I can't look in the mirror and see myself as straight. I yearn for acceptance, but your discrimination and rejection tarnish me, forcing me to my personality. 
The Caribbean Health Agency, CAFA, has taken the bold step of beginning the dialogue among students in the Caribbean islands, begging the question, bullying, what's the big deal? CAFA hosted the first ever youth panel discussion in Grenada, where students from various secondary schools were given a mic and a platform to talk about a problem that affects them, their peers, their communities and country. This event gained financial backing from the European Union, which has been supporting the work of CAFA and that of youth development in the region for many years. How does a culture of violence develop in our society when somebody does you something and you have to be violent in order to make your point back? Or you want to escalate it. Well, he do me something, so I'm going to do him twice as bad. Or he injured me and I'm going to retaliate and injure two of his family. Where and how did that begin? It, it begins uh, at home, it begins in schools, it begins in, in our societies. It's become, as you rightly alluded to, almost like second nature. We tease without even thinking. We, we jeer out thinking we're doing something. Males slap each other as, as if it's a game. And, and we do hurtful things to people, not even thinking that it matters. And so I know it's a serious problem because in the end, the individuals feel really badly about it. The reality is that bullying is not a new phenomenon uh, in our society and, may I dare say, in our schools. What has happened over the past few years is that there has been an increased awareness of the negative implications from bullying and due to some very bad press or sad press, I might say, these negatives have been brought more to the light. Today, there exists an appetite, I believe, for the elimination of the incidence of bullying in our schools. CAFA believes that young people are the catalyst for change in many of the public health issues that face the region. And yes, bullying is a major public health issue. Chief Medical Officer at the Ministry of Health in Grenada, Dr. George Mitchell, admitted that health facilities have been feeling the effects of bullying and violence in schools in recent time. I am not sure if you know about uh, the statistics re our admissions at our institutions, but these have been growing, and particularly so among young persons. And we feel, and the literature is showing, that there is a direct relationship between those type of activities, bullying in schools, self-esteem issues, um, anger management that derive from that, and depression and mental health issues. So injuries cost the health services and cost society, cost families and cost businesses a lot of money. Uh, and it is that increase in, in that area and uh, in homicide, many of our countries also, that is where somebody is deliberately uh, killed. Many of our countries are experiencing almost epidemics in the last five or six years. If you define an epidemic as a definite increase way above over every, what you used to see before, uh, in Trinidad, St. Kitts, Jamaica, Bahamas, Belize, and that includes um, homicide, domestic violence, uh, gang violence, um, uh, uh, among the causes of that situation. Sadly, those who are bullied can become vulnerable to the negative influences of our society and become bullies themselves. I thought of giving you an example of when I was in school, but I said maybe I might cause you to do other things, so I chose not to. Um, the big deal with bullying then is that if it isn't eradicated, it will fuel an unending cycle that sometimes ends with death. And sadly, that is a big deal. The 2007 Global School-Based Students' Health Survey conducted in several Caribbean islands also revealed that about one quarter of the 6,780 participants reported having been bullied in the last month prior to the survey. Rates of bullying were similar for boys and girls, and younger children reported higher rates of peer victimization. What's even more disturbing is that almost 25% of students reported sadness and hopelessness, more than 10% reported loneliness and anxiety, and more than 15% reported having seriously considered suicide in the year prior to being interviewed. Bullied students were recognized to be more likely than non-bullied students to report mental health issues. So what are the young people saying about bullying? Meet Sean Williams, student. He believes that bullies are not born, but raised. Some studies indicate 
that some, not all bullies, have naturally aggressive and or hyperactive personalities from the start. But that doesn't mean that all spirited kids will bully and all mellow kids will be perfectly empathic and kind. Those are just a few traits that has been identified in some bullies. The truth is, bullies are not born into this world. Bullies are raised. Sometimes we have, how we call it, click. So you have your group, and then there is a certain girl in the class. I don't like that girl, she's very annoying, and you just exclude her from the group. From the group. This is also bullying, because it, it leads to isolation. That, person's feel, that person feels so like, they don't want me around, they don't, you know? So self-esteem usually drops, and that person just stay away from everybody else, and they just, you know, sometimes cry. It causes a lot of emotional distress. Girl, you ugly me. Where come on people What's the problem? Leave me alone now. Nah. Just talk about it. Just talk about it. Just, just leave me alone, Where? girl. Uh, what is it? Know about it? I thought so. I really thought so. I don't understand why you always interfere with me. Just leave me alone. You can't do nothing about it. <laughs> Bullies tend to view threats where they are known and identify with other kids as hostile when they are not. Accidentally bump into a bully in the line at the cafeteria and a fight might erupt at the snap at the judgment. Due to lack of compassion and empathy, bullies have difficulty understanding how others feel and they are unable to accurately decode situations in which other kids are actually attempting to show them empathy. Another form of bullying is cyberbullying, which has become a major talking point with the arrival of the technological revolution. It's the kind not seen in school fights or face-to-face -face teasing, but it's done online through texting, emails, posts or messages on social media and has proven to be one of the worst types of bullying today. This was given prominence at the CAFA youth panel discussion and students took a firm stance against this form of bullying. Cyberbullying can happen at any time, late at night or as, as, as soon as you wake up. There is no time limit or restriction for a cyberbullying to prey. Cyberbullying messages and images can be posted anonymously and sent over the internet to anyone who can access it. It can be difficult and sometimes impossible to trace the source. What is on the internet cannot be easily moved. When we're on Facebook, it's like we're different person. In real life, you quiet, you don't say nothing, you just there. But on Facebook, you are the loudest mouth. Everybody be like, oh, you see your picture? And oh, she begging for likes, and oh, this, that, that. And you just go in, you just coming down on the person, and you just think it's okay, because you know what? You're sitting behind your computer screen, nobody can see you, so you could just say whatever. It is not okay. That a large amount of cyberbullying occurs simply because some people think that it's cool. Some do it to be except group of friends who also cyberbully. This can be a case of peer pressure. They may also cyberbully others because they personally dislike them for any reason. These reasons may include jealousy or revenge. Many people commit cyberbullying because they have problems in their own life and do not know how to deal with them. This leads the bully to want to bring others down to their level by trying to ruin their lives to make the bully feel better about his or herself. St. Joseph Convent St. George's, I think they had their ball and everybody put up their picture and thing at the end. I don't like she dress, that was sixties dress, I don't like that dress, that dress old, old. And you know, they just keep going and carrying on with it and I was like, seriously? It is bullying, it is not cool. There's the increased incidences of people injuring themselves and cutting themselves and feeling low self-worth and low self-estimate. A lot of those things happen because they have not met the expectations of the people around them. You're too fat, you're too this. And we say these things almost casually without thinking. It's a serious problem. Thank you so much. The social scourge that is bullying has now raised its ugly head to not just cause mental harm, but has claimed hundreds of thousands of lives worldwide. A simple Google search of bullying fatalities shows extensive lists of students from as young as 6 to 13 to 18 years old either committing suicide because of bullying or succumbing to injuries because of a bully's rage. The students at the panel discussion brought a different light on the issue. Unusual and unlikely suspects known as parents. 
some of whom they say are the biggest bullies around. Hey, child, I what tell you, mommy? you won't watch the ways. You okay. see, the water tell you, you're a mistake. I shouldn't have made you. What? You're a mistake. <laughs> it's the worst thing I ever make in my life. I, you ain't doing nothing around. You but, stupid. You ain't. You don't. You ain't doing nothing in school. What? Mommy, what is the what problem? What I make you for? Tell me what I make you for. Why are you treating me this way? Because I don't understand why I make you for. No, I feel you like to like cry you now. Why is it? Parents of bullies tend to be highly competitive and placed on reasonable demands on their children to be superior to other kids academically, socially, athletically, etc. These parents often have prejudices based on race, sex, wealth, and achievements. They teach their children to compete at all costs and to win by whatever means. With figures showing increased incidences of school violence and bullying, CAFA has decided it's time to tackle the problem head-on and begin the process of eradicating this social illness from the region's schools. Now, with all this information about bullies, who they are and what they do, the youth panel turned the tables and looked at the situation from another perspective, from the mind of a bully. I am Jesse. I'm your perpetrator, the enforcer, the labeler, the discreditor of people. I destroy your self-esteem. I alienate you. Why do I do this? Probably because I choose to be the predator, not the prey. See this scar? It's exactly the size of a cigar. I cause you to hurt yourself because it's only fair. God said to share, right? So I let you share all the gifts I get from home. But sometimes I want to share other things too, you know? Like a movie, a friendship, or even a good book. But that's impossible now, I know. And I know you don't expect this from me, Jesse, the bully. But it hurts. So I numb the pain at the expense of my liver. This is my life choice. I'm making you cry is the drug that gets me through. I'm lost without you. The bully that we think is all hard hurts too. And sometimes we don't understand it behind the hard shell that you see being hostile and aggressive to everybody else is somebody who is genuinely in need of care, affection, genuine relationships and friendships. And so we have more victims than we think in a bullying situation. Sometimes we think the victim is the person who just got fought with or who got beaten up or who, you know, had the, the issues stolen from them. Of course, the, the per perpetrator is in fact a victim as well. Enough times, bullies are people that are soft-hearted. They tend to build a barrier around them because they want people to think they're tough. They're that boss. They're somebody that, okay, they could take advantage on people. Enough time this happens because they're being taken advantage on. The CAFA Youth Panel on Bullying brought about a measure of introspection for the students who said they were able to re-evaluate themselves, what they took for granted, and the way they treat their peers. Students were grateful for the opportunity. From doing research and what I've seen, I think I'm a bully, you know. Because there's one girl in my class. We have our group and thing, but we consider us the annoying one. So we just live out and thing. And um, we make fun, we say, what are you girl, you know, fat, fat and thing. But we don't really check in on that because, you know, we think bullying is really coughing and hitting and thing. But when I did the research and when we had our discussion at school, I said, wow. So that means all the time, I was a big bully boy. I want to say, while bullying, may have a negative impact on many lives of the victim. I was a victim of being bullied before and it takes courage for it to be a victim because for me, be being bullied has teach, taught me to be strong. There's, there was a clique that used to tease, tease children. And whenever I pass, they must say something. Whenever I pass, it's like they hate to see me. And I didn't so bad. I mean, I used to feel like, oh, but I didn't so bad with them. I used to be like, let it talk. And I would always go and tell the teacher, and nothing is being done. Because the teacher would be like, oh, you always come with a complaint. But she never see the, the, the meaning. The, she never stopped to listen to what is really happening. Because she does see it as serious. 
but I will tell one of my friends, and whenever, and whenever I tell my friend, she will come up to the person, she'll, and she will be like, so why ain't I afraid in the girl for what she do? And that person will back away. So it's like she afraid me because my friend trying to defend me. And from that I learned you don't have to be a bully. And dealing with bullying, you don't have to bully others because you are being bullied who are weaker than you. And bullying, I must say, must teach us a positive side to be strong just as I did. A recent World Health Organization report has indicated that interpersonal violence is among the leading causes of death among youth ages 10 to 19 in the Americas, including the Caribbean. It's against this backdrop that Caribbean Public Health Day 2015 turned its attention to violence in schools. It is the reason for the symposium, where secondary school students discussed violence in schools with an emphasis on bullying. Officers in health and education were impressed. Well, it is, it is particularly important for us to allow or to have the students themselves talk about the issue. And so it resonates better with that audience. I mean, it is okay for adults to talk about it, but for us, if we can get the students themselves to talk to the issue, it sometimes hits the right nerve and causes uh, their peers to listen more and more. And it's the target group that we need to work with if we want to see a turnaround from it. The students were highly involved, they were very charged, and the presentations were done by themselves, prepared by themselves. And so the fact that students, you could have engaged them on that level made it very, very meaningful. I think the discussions were very pertinent. Um, the students were able to highlight a lot of key issues concerning bullying, particularly cyberbullying, which is something that is on the rise right now. Um, you would see it in the media that a lot of students are misusing technology to inflict harm on other individuals. So I think the discussions that arise, or oh, sorry, from this session were very good. This program kicks off a momentum aimed at keeping the spotlight on bullying in the Caribbean with a view to soliciting widespread support and finding solutions. And many of the recommendations themselves came from the student body. Bullying can often be seen as a rite of passage for many individuals. Most people have undergone some degree of teasing at some point in their lives. Therefore, it is important to make sure that everyone is aware of the extent of the problem and the effects it can have on the children. The age range, what I heard, was from 13 to 17. And the Domestic Violence Act, from what I've read, is mainly for adults and it can be vice versa, male or female, that does it. So wouldn't it be more effective if you target the specific age range within the school and create a set of laws to help combat the bullying? You could launch a campaign for that. Schools and other organizations should create anti-bullying programs which can be used as a solution to bullying. Educating teachers, parents, and students about the issue can go a long way in preventing and stopping bullying schools. To stop being a silent observer or a silent encourager. A lot of times through peer pressure, there would be, the bully would be someone who gets the laughs in the class, gets the attention of the class because he's speaking out or she's speaking out very loudly. And anyone who speaks out against her or tries to steal her thunder or his thunder gets the wrath of that bully. A panel discussion among Caribbean students helps to raise awareness and bring attention to the problem of bullying in our region. But admittedly, one event cannot turn back overnight a habitual practice that has been embedded in the fabric of society. It is simply a start. Not because someone is different, you have to exclude them, you have to you know, just treat them like they're, like they're, no, like they're nobody. You know, um, tolerance is a big thing, you have to learn to tolerate people being different, you have to learn to tolerate other people, you have to be patient because not everybody will react to the situation as you would, not everybody will do the same thing as you. So you have to learn to accept because difference. Love is the way to go, without it our life value less than gold, so show your love to your neighbor, friends and foes, together Hey
an example, no more dispute, no more shall we fuss and fight, no more differences, no more misuse of words, do it for the sake of mankind, I said let's do it for the sake of mankind, oh, oh, oh. 